Problem 137 says, a bar over a sequence of digits in a decimal indicates that the sequence repeats indefinitely. What they're talking about is this bar here. Uh, what the bar means is, uh, is that this number will repeat. So 0 0.0012 with the bar is the same as saying 0 0.0012121212212. If the bar was just above the 2, like so, that's the same as saying 0 0.001. Two, 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 two. So basically, that's just what it's saying. Okay. So 137, they give you this this equation, and they ask uh, you to find the value. Here's how I solved it. First, I factored out the 10 uh, squared to get 10 squared minus 1, and then over here, 0 0.0012. I just ignored the line because the number is so small that it doesn't actually, I don't think it actually matters uh, if it repeats or not. Anyway, 10 to the 2 uh, is the same as 100. So you really get 100 minus 1, which is going to be 99, times 0 0.0012. This number multiplied by this number is the same as moving the decimal over twice. So it becomes 0 0.12 times. 99. Then you just uh, multiply them and solve for the answer. So um, it's going to be 18, 10, 108, 108, 1188.11.88. And the answer choice closest to that is going to be E, which is 12. And that's how you solve 137. 138 states that uh, at a loading dock, each worker on the night crew loaded three-fourths as many boxes as each worker on the day crew. If the night crew has four-fifths as many workers as the day crew, what fraction of all the boxes loaded by the two crews did the day crew load? So we know that there are two groups of workers. There are the night workers, and then there are the day workers. Two different groups of people. And we are given, no, oh, so we need to find out number of boxes loaded uh, per person, okay? And we're looking for number of people on both the night crew and the day crew. And then, of course, we're looking for the total number of boxes that were um, loaded per group. 138 says that each worker on the night crew loaded three-fourths as many boxes as on the day crew, right? So that's the same as saying three and four, because if the day crew loaded four boxes per person, then the night crew must have loaded three. That's what three over four is. It's a ratio. Now the night crew has four-fifths as many workers. So if there are five people on, on the day crew, and there must only be four people on the night crew. If there are four people and each of them loaded three boxes, you multiply this to get the total number of, uh, of boxes loaded. You get 12. Down here, you get 20. So far, so good. Now, the question is saying, what fraction of all the boxes loaded by the two crews did the day crew load? So what fraction 20 over 20 plus 12? 20 plus 12... It's going to be 32, and 20 is the number uh, that the day crew loaded. Simplify this, and you get 10 over uh, 16, and that's 5 over 8. And that is answer choice E. Number 139. A restaurant meal cost $35.50 and there was no tax. If the tip was more than 10%, so the tip is going to be uh, more than 10%, and the tip was less than 15%, the total amount paid must have been between, and then the five answer choices, each of them give you a range. So obviously this is a problem where we're going to have to figure out the range. What is 10% and what is 15%, and then um, find the range in between. Okay, 35, 50. The same as saying 35.5, right? Let's multiply this by 0 0.1 and by 0 0.15 and see what we get. So do the 0 0.1 first. 
what you're going to get is you move the decimal point over 1 and you get 3.55. That's 10%. Three dollars and fifty-five cents is ten percent of thirty-five dollars and fifty cents. What about on the fifteen percent side? Well, that's the same as saying thirty-five point five times uh, zero point one five. Twenty-five, twenty-seven, seventeen seventy-five, five five three, fifty-two. Well. Five dollars and thirty-two cents. So five thirty-two. It's going to be fifteen percent of, of, of this amount. So what's thirty-five uh thirty-five fifty plus three point five five? Well that's gonna be five, five and five is ten nine thirty-nine dollars and five cents. That's gonna be the lower range. And then the most that they could tip and, and pay total is going to be thirty-five fifty plus five dollars and thirty-two cents, and that's going to be uh, forty dollars and eighty-two cents. So when you look at the answer choices, the answer is going to be B, and B is thirty-nine and forty-one, and is this range? encompassed in, in this? Yes, because 3905 is is going to be uh, between 39 and 41 and 4082 uh, is also going to be between 39 and 41. Number 140 says in a weightlifting competition the total weight of Joe's two lifts was 750 pounds. Let's call his uh, lift 1 X and lift Two y. So they're saying x plus y equals 750 pounds. If twice the weight of his first lift, so 2x, equals 300 pounds more than the weight of his second lift, y plus 300, in pounds, what was the weight of his first lift? x equals what? All right. This is a question that tests how well you can translate that, that paragraph into algebra. Once you get the algebra down, the rest is easy. We're just solving for, for x. First thing we do is isolate y. The way that gets us 2x minus 300, and we plug that back into the original equation. And we get x plus 2x minus 300 equals 750. It's going to be 3x equals uh, 1050. And x equals see, three, five, 350. And that is answer choice D. On to number 141, which says a club collected exactly $599 from its members if each member contributed at least, so at least $12. What is the greatest number of members the club could have? Well, there's two different ways to solve this. The long way to solve this is to take 12 and add 12 and add 12 and at 12 and and then count them all up and figure out how close you can get to 599 without going over there's always a shortcut on the GMAT though and the shortcut here is that 599 is remarkably close to 600 and if you've looked at a clock you know that 12 times 5 is 60 so 12 times 50 must equal 600 but 600 is is over 599 it's too, it's too much. There's, there's too much money. They didn't actually collect this amount. We know each person can give at least $12, but someone can obviously give more than $12. So what the actual answer is going to be is 49 because 49, 48 of those people gave $12 and the, the 49th person gave whatever that rest, the rest of that was. There couldn't have been a 50th person because that 50th person would have given $12 and that would have pushed uh, the total over the 599 limit to 600. And we're looking for 599. So the answer is going to be 49. If 49 is answer choice C. Number 142 says, if y is the smallest positive integer such that 3150 times y is the square of an integer. Okay. Whenever you see the square of the integer things, uh, these type of questions, 
what they're really looking for is factors. Can you factor out this big number and then make sure that there's an even number of factors? Because that's the only way that, that this is going to be a, an actual square. If that's true, then we can figure out what y is. Simply by finding, you know, figuring out what is the lone factor that, that, that doesn't have a pair. So let's do this. Uh, let's start with 5 then. Divide this by 5, uh, 6, 30. Divide by 3, 3 10, or 2, 10, 3, 70, 7, and 10, 2, and 5. Now we just count up the pairs. There are two 3s here. So y can't be 3 because then that would actually make this not work. There are, let's see, two 5s. So we have that pair accounted for. 7 and 2 are the only two numbers that don't have pairs. So y must be a 7 and a 2. So y must be 14. And 14 is going to be answer choice E. Now, I know this might be a little bit confusing, so let me explain a little bit further. So the reason why y is going to be 7 and 2 is because we're looking for an integer squared. When we factored out all these numbers, what we're really saying is that 3150 is the same as 5 times 3 times 3 times 7 times 2 times 5, right? So let's write it out this way. So 5 times 5 times 3 times 3 times 7 times 2 times whatever y is equals some mysterious number squared. When something is squared, that means you have two of everything. Everything's accounted for, right? Because uh, if whatever in this integer is, it's going to be, it's going to have a pair. So 7 and 2 are the only ones that we realized didn't have pairs. So in order for this to be true, the y has to make up for the pairs. And that's why y is 7 and 2, because if y were 7 and 2, what we would get is 7 and 2 times 7 and 2. And now 7 and 2 have pairs, and now the integer can be squared. Whatever this integer is, that integer, it, you know, I think we can even solve for the integer if we needed to. I mean, the integer is going to be 5 times 3 times 7 times 2, right? Because when you square that, it's the same as multiplying it by itself. And this is equal to this. So hopefully this made sense. Um, it's kind of like abstract, I, I must admit. But uh, the nice thing about thinking it in this very abstract format is that you don't need to, to worry about, you know, man, what is the factors? Do I need to memorize the factors? No, you don't need to. All you need to do is look at the big number, bring them down to its prime factorization, by just taking a number and dividing and dividing and dividing until you have nothing left but prime factors, then you just count them up. And you can very easily solve for what y is simply by seeing what the numbers are uh, that don't have pairs. Anyway, I think I've said enough about this question. Let me, uh, let me look ahead to see what one, uh, 143 is. And uh, actually, you know what? I don't think I'm going to have enough time to tackle 143, so I'm going to save that for the next video.